Hello. I don't know whether any of you picked up on a little news item reported by the BBC on Monday about a mysterious whirlpool that appeared earlier this month in the skies above Hawaii. The strange phenomenon lasted only a few seconds and looked rather like those wonderful deep sea photographs of distant galaxies, a central core with arms spiraling out from the center. Now scientists assure us that this strange spectacle was neither a galaxy nor a UFO, but believe the phenomenon was connected to the launch of a SpaceX rocket, as the whirlpool was spotted in the sky shortly after a launch. Now I watched the brief, brief clip on the BBC website and whatever caused it, it was mind blowing. Though it had man-made and not a natural cause, its presence in the night sky reminded me of the psalm that we looked at on Sunday morning, Psalm 19. A psalm that reminds us that for those with eyes to see, the glorious residents of the night sky point us to the one who placed them in the heavens. Now, though the night sky has no voice that we can hear, except with very expensive scientific equipment, when we look up at night, excuse me, <coughs> when we look up at night, the skies resound with wonder, majesty, splendor and awe. And as we look at them, we can't help but join in worshipping the God who brought them into being. But it also reminded me of another psalm, one that led me to a more sombre reflection, Psalm 8. Let me read it for you now. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all the flocks and the herds, the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea all that swim in the paths of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Now it's a psalm that describes worship in two forms. Firstly, there is the praise and worship of creation itself. The glory of God set in the heavens for all to wonder and marvel at. As I said, we can't hear the praise that the stars and planets, nebula and galaxies offer to their creator. Their worship is visible, yet silent. But their presence in the sky above us brings us to a place of worship ourselves. When I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, just as we are created to worship the one who made us, and to reflect his glory, so all of creation in its many forms brings worship and praise to God. As I sit here in my study, I look out over Storton Woods. The oak and the sycamore and the beech are bare, but their branches seem to reach towards the heavens in praise. And the fir trees, still resplendent with their greenery, are swaying gently in the breeze, as if dancing in praise of the God who created them. Now that might seem fanciful, but if we give ourselves to really see the world that God has blessed us with, who knows where that contemplation might take us? How often do we walk through this world blind to the beauty that is all around us? caught up instead in the everyday busyness of life. 
even our built up environment gives us signs of the creator everywhere we look. The birds in the trees, the wind and the rain, the sun, and the clouds, the flowers filling the planters around Morton Cross, even the grass, which relentlessly forces its way up between the cracks in the pavement. Let's allow ourselves to look and wonder, to see and praise, even as we go about our daily business. But the psalmist also speaks of a second kind of worship, the worship of our lives. When he looks at creation and sees the glory of God, the psalmist is as cause to wonder about the place of humanity in God's creation. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? All that God has made, he has made to reflect his glory. From the universe in all its splendour to the little planet on which we live, which bears and sustains us. And upon this earth, God has bestowed his own image on human beings. The sheer scale of creation, its beauty and majesty reflecting God's own, brings the psalmist from a place of wonder to a place of humility and awe. Why should this awesome God care so deeply for us? We are insignificantly small in the vast scale of the universe. How can the one whose infinite power is capable not only of creating the immense sweep of the heavens, but the infinite variety in the details that adorn each element? How can this mind-blowingly awesome God also be loving and tender with humankind? who so often turns its back on him. We too have been made to reflect God's glory. And even more than that, we are his image bearers, made to participate in the work of creation itself. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You made them rulers over the works of your hands you put everything under their feet. We've been given responsibility for this world that God has created, to be its caretakers, to reflect the love and the compassion and the care that he has towards all he has made. In Genesis 1, we read, Be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. We are doing that, but not to reflect the glory of God, but to satisfy our greed. How should knowing that shape and fashion what we do as a church? How should that knowledge shape and fashion our prayers and our resolve to be better stewards of creation. That strange whirlpool that spun briefly across the sky earlier this month may have looked amazing, but it was caused by another satellite going up to join the thousands already circling this planet. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm an amateur stargazer. I love space and, and all things connected to it. But watching that spurt swirl in the night sky this week has given me pause. How can I faithfully bear the image of God in the way I think about this small part of God's glorious creation, rather than bearing the image of a world that seeks to take and not uh, steward? How can I better reflect his glory to others rather than simply mirroring the world around me? The psalmist raised the question, Father God, why do you love us so much? 
Well, that's a question that's never far from my thoughts as I watch the news and live in the world that we have shaped to suit ourselves. And yet, love us, he does. Even to the extent of sending his son Jesus to die on a cross for us, to wipe the slate clean and bring us back into a right relationship with him. God made himself lower than the angels in giving up for a while the glories of heaven to be born as a child in a manger. Jesus, the promised Messiah. And though the world did not see it and still struggles to see it even today, he is the one who is eternally crowned with glory and honour, with all creation beneath his feet. But Jesus came not to subdue and enslave creation, not to condemn those that he had put on this earth to be its stewards, but instead to raise it up, to raise us up and redeem it. He gave himself for fallen humanity and in his resurrection guaranteed us rebirth. When he returned to the Father's side, he sent the Holy Spirit to guide and direct us, to reshape us into the people we were created to be, the people that the psalmist speaks of, Jesus-shaped people, stewards of God's glorious creation and mirrors of God's glorious love to the world. And that's the love that all creation shouts from the heavens and longs to make itself known here on earth. How will we let that love transform and remake us today so that we can join the psalmist in giving praise? Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth.